I used to think that investing was a process reserved for the Warren Buffetts of the world, and that it was never something to be spoken about in polite company. Then I spoke to an accountant and a financial advisor, and I recognized that everyone is doing it. We're just not talking about it. So this week's episode of Digital Tattoos Digital Finance Series is all about e-investing, and whether or not we can actually trust robots with our finances. The Handbook of International Financial Terms says that investing is the process of buying and holding assets to earn income or capital gain. Investments may be in physical property such as real estate or collectibles or in financial instruments. In trying to understand this definition, the most important part is financial insurance, which is a contract involving financial obligation. Examples of these are stocks, bonds, and loans. So by this definition, investing is the process of buying into a stock, bond, or loan, a contract of financial obligation, with the hope of making money in return. The Financial Consumer Agency lists 10 of the most common investments available to Canadians as annuities, bonds, savings bonds, exchange traded funds, mutual funds, segregated funds, stocks, and treasury bills. Robo-investing typically focuses on portfolios of exchange traded funds, or ETFs. These are handled by a financial institution on behalf of a client and are traded on the stock market. Unlike traditional investing, robo-investing places your money in the hands or ones and zeros of complex banking algorithms. Traditionally, this process was handled by financial managers, but recently financial managers have started partnering with companies such as Wealthsimple for human and algorithm blended approaches to investing. Wealthsimple, one of Canada's foremost robo-investment institutions, describes the process like this. Highly specialized software is used in the place of a traditional financial advisor. They say that this benefits consumers because it's cheaper than traditional financial investing and it's more accessible. Now let's hear from someone who is actually using a robo-investing platform. I sat down with Jason, a fellow digital tattoo contributor and graduate student at the University of Toronto to do the uncomfortable. Talk about money. Hi, today we're here with Jason, one of our student assistant contributors, and we're going to be talking about robo-investing. Thank you for joining me. Uh, you're welcome. It's great to be here. <laughs> um, so first, we're going to talk about how you got into robo-investing. Okay, so I used the time that I was building up my uh, emergency fund to prepare for investing by reading, uh, reading up on investing. I especially follow uh, Buffett's recommendation on uh, Benjamin Graham. Mm -hmm. uh, his uh, works are pretty good. I came across the uh, concept of index investing and combined it with uh, couch potato mentality. Mm -hmm. So I guess the creators of robo investing uh, like Wealthsimple had the same idea. Okay, so you really started with research as your entrance point. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, so, have you seen any of the ads that have been going around for robo investing lately? They've targeted a lot of students. Yeah. So the our closest uh, TTC uh, mm -hmm. subway station, they had uh, Wealth Simple had a full station ad a couple of uh, okay. months ago. Uh, they must have spent a lot of money because that up ad was up for like a week or so. Okay. Mm -hmm. And do you feel like the advertisement accurately represented your experience with robo investing? Uh, yeah, they emphasize a pretty hands-off approach, and that's basically how it's been um, from checking, mm -hmm. aside from checking monthly statements, um, I haven't really had much to do. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, do you access your investing platform through a bank, or do you do it through Wealthsimple? Uh, I do, do it through Wealthsimple directly. Okay. Uh, they're not affiliated with any traditional bank. I think most of these robo-investing companies are their own uh, institutions. Okay. Yeah. Um, and have you previously tried any other form of in uh, sorry have you previously tried any other form of investing uh, no I haven't uh, okay. robo investing is my first foray into I guess financial adulthood okay yeah and how did you choose wealth simple as the platform that you wanted to use uh, it, I compared a bunch of the robo investing uh, options out there some mm -hmm. of them weren't available in Canada uh, wealth simple is a Canadian one so I decided okay. to go with that Okay. Mm -hmm. So it really falls back on all the research that you had started to do on your own. Mm -hmm. And Wonderful. comparing all the different options. Okay. Yeah. Um, what attracted you specifically to robo-investing, or what do you see as the benefits of robo-investing? Uh, the hands-off approach, as mm -hmm. well as uh, the strategy to stick with index funds. Uh, okay. They help auto-rebalance your portfolio mm -hmm. um, once in a while, so the funds that you pay uh, actually do something for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And do you feel like that would be less work than traditional investing? 
Oh, definitely. Yeah, without having to, you know, rebalance or check up on performance, um, they do it for you. Nice. So it's basically like a regular uh, advisor, but replaced with a robot. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you see any drawbacks to robo investing and the experience you've had with it? Um, robo investing, in my experience, is pretty bare bones. Mm -hmm. um, there is a call center that you can find real people to talk with, and okay. they do give advice. But so then it's not all robots. It's not all robots, but um, it's not as personal as uh, a, re a tra traditional advisor would be, okay. like a sit-down, one-on-one kind of meeting. Uh, they also have a knowledge bank, uh, so I guess robo-investing is more geared towards the um, self-learners. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and have you found that your robo-investing service has been transparent about the data security practices that they're using? Yeah, uh, okay. so WellSimple uses 256-bit uh, SSL, mm. uh, so pretty standard AES encryption like most banks do. Okay. Uh, so I guess that's uh, as high-tech as they can go so far. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you feel like you trust your robo-investing platform? Uh, yeah, they also do two-factor authentication. So, okay. Um, yeah, as long as I have my phone with me, I should be good. Perfect. Um, is there anything that you wish your robo-investing service did differently or any needs that you feel it doesn't meet? Uh, yeah, like I mentioned ab uh, above, it, should, it would be great uh, if on like monthly statements they explained um, the rationale behind some of the trades they did on okay. my behalf. Uh, right now, it's I just look at what trades happened, but not necessarily why they happened. Okay, so do you think you would like it to mimic more of that in-person experience, having being able to ask questions? Um, not necessarily for me to ask questions, but mm. um, for them to prov provide a rationale. Okay. Uh, because I know that like they might do the same trades for a, a large amount of people. Sure. Um, so I guess for them, I don't know. I don't know how their algorithm does it, so maybe it's hard for them to provide a rationale without exposing their secrets. Of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so in general, do you feel like once we've gone through all this information, do you trust your robo-investing platform as much, more than, or the same as traditional investing? Uh, I would probably say the same as, okay. maybe a little a leaning a little towards robo-investing. Okay. Because uh, I'm sure I could pull up a forum and compare my performance with um, the pool of the other people that are um, being advised by the same robot as I am. Okay, mm -hmm. so it comes back to some of that transparency, being able to compare, knowing where things are going. Yeah, and also it feels more like you're uh, in a pool with other investors, whereas okay. like a traditional investor, it's a uh, more one-on-one -on -one relationship. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and our last question, do you have any tips for someone who's trying out robo-investing for the first time? Sure. Um, investing in your own knowledge is the best uh, investment you can make. So okay. preparation is the key to stepping into financial adulthood. Perfect. Jason, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. When diving into the world of robo-investing, there are a couple important things to remember. Your data security is not in the hands of a bank, it's in the hands of a private company. Here are a few tips for making sure that your robo-investments stay as safe as possible. Use good password hygiene. Make sure that your passwords are safe and it's not the same password for all the accounts you're using. Use secure Wi-Fi networks and VPNs when possible. And make sure to read the terms and services, even though they're long and boring. Finally, make sure you keep an eye on your investments to make sure that nothing looks fishy and report to your bank as soon as you do see something off. Finally, keep an eye on the news and make sure that your financial institution isn't the victim of hacks or breaches. Until next time.